Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to our new topic for RE this half term. Our key question is, what difference does it make to believe in Ahimsa, Grace and Umar? So Ahimsa is a Hindu uh, uh, belief, which means harmlessness. Grace is a Christianity belief, which relates to generosity of God. And Umar relates to community within Islam. We'll look at how they all differ and how they actually link and weave and interlink between all the three religions as well. And this key question will also continue throughout our topic this half term. Um, we're about to move on to our knowing more, remembering more. So please make sure you've got a pen and pencil ready. And you'll also have a quiz on this at the end to online purple math to make sure that you've done the activity and watched it at home. OK, let's start. So question one. Sacred means something is religious or has special meaning. True or false? Sacred means something is religious or has special meaning. True or false? Number two, what is the name of the Jewish holy place? What is the name of the Jewish holy place? Is it a mosque, a church, a temple, or a synagogue? Is it a mosque, a church, a temple, or a synagogue? Question three. Why do religious people visit their sacred buildings? Why do religious people visit their sacred buildings? And finally, question four, explain why Ramadan is important to Muslims. Explain why Ramadan is important to Muslims. Okay, let's go through the answers. Number one, and sacred means something that is religious or has a special meaning is true. It does mean that. Number two, the name of the Jewish holy place is a synagogue. Uh, question three, why do religious people visit their sacred buildings? So they can connect with God is one reason, to be spiritual, to be close to their ancestors or for pilgrimage as well. And question four, explain why Ramadan is important to Muslims. Uh, to some Muslims do Ramadan to understand the hardship for those who have little food or have little, uh, who, who suffer and to be thankful for, to Allah for their blessings. OK, so our first lesson. So what does it mean for Hindus, Muslims and Christians to commit to their belief? So our success criteria today is to to clarify what we understand and our own, about our own commitments and what we understand of others' commitments, uh, to think for yourself what different religious commitments are and to describe the impact of those religious commitments on people's lives. I think it's really important, that one. Okay, so this is our uh, knowledge organizer. So let's just go over a few of the vocabulary that we've discussed already. So we've got the term here, the first one, Umar. This term means that all Muslims regardless where they live in the world, are all members of a worldwide faith. We've got the second one, Ahimsa, which is the principle of nonviolence. Many Hindus believe being nonviolent means showing respect for all life, human, animal, and vegetable. And then grace. Grace is an unconditional love of God for everyone, regardless of whether they regardless of whether they whether or not they have obeyed his will that's really important okay and then the definition of those three underneath in community harmlessness and forgiveness uh, are also there and we will cover those as we go through the next few topics okay so let's start off with this have a think to yourself we've got a graph here think about islam what do you think this graph tells you okay you've got five points on the graph I've taken away the titles. Have a good think. What do you think it refers to? Okay. Have your idea in your head. If you're not sure, I'll give you a bit more of a clue. I'll give you some times. So we've got time and a graph. What do you think it tells us? If you're still not sure, I'll give you another clue. And we've got five points. So five points throughout the day. What do you think that might relate to? Five points throughout the day. And the answer is time of prayer. Remember, Muslims pray five times a day. Okay, so one just before uh, 
sunrise that's just before 6 a.m one directly after lunchtime one around four o'clock four four thirty one just after six and then one around nine o'clock and obviously as the seasons change and becomes night and dark there's time slightly change okay so thinking about that graph what does that tell you about muslims commitment to islam talk to your partners think to yourselves write down the sentence what does it tell us about the Muslims' commitment to Islam? Pause the video. Okay, so what does it tell us about Muslims' commitment to Islam? Well, if a Muslim is praying five times a day, they worship Allah, they're thankful for everything they have, and... Um, they're also thankful for um, the words passed on to Muhammad, which we'll also come on to later on, and thanking for all the blessings that they've received. Okay, so we're going to play a commitment game. Now, I'm going to read out the instructions now, and I'm going to show you what the game is next. Now, you can play this if you're in the classroom, or if you're at home, you can play with members of family. And if you don't, then you can do it on your own, um, and there'll be another activity to follow. So let me explain the activity, and then you can understand how we're going to work this one out. So, we have a board game. It says between four, but like I said, you can play it on your own if need be. The cards that you'll have are commitments from a variety of religious, or a variety. Some are religious, some aren't. Okay. Take turns to read them out. Ask a teammate where you want to place them in there in in, in your the ranking, which I'll show you the ranking in a moment. Um, you can just decide if you're going to ignore them or agree with them. Um, and obviously some of you will have different reasons and, uh, and views on things. So again, a good opportunity to discuss. Place the card on the board, say stick it down, we don't need to worry about that. Place that on the board where you think it should go, but make sure you have that good discussion first and take turns, okay? And when it is, if someone puts a card in a place you think isn't quite right, you can move it as long as you can give a reason, okay? So let's have a look. These are all the cards you're gonna get. So you've got ranging from loving your family, doing what mom and dad say, your future, going to bed at the right time, God, being part of the community, being a happy person, uh, worshipping at a holy place, being a good person, um, doing your homework. Lots of different um, commitments there. And I want you to organise them. So cut them all out and organise them into these three subheadings. You've got very committed, sometimes committed, and not committed. Okay, now think really carefully about these and justify your reason. If someone's not going to agree with you, you've got to be able to give them a reason why you believe it should go into that sub subhead subheading. Okay, this activity will take about 15 minutes. So I want you to pause the video now, do the activity, and then when you've finished it and you've agreed, come back to the video and we'll continue the rest of the lesson. Okay, pause the video, please. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've managed to sort all of those out into your correct um, subheadings. Let's move on to the next part of the activity. So class discussion or with yourself. So why have you selected the ones you have put into your first group? You're very committed. What commitments, so what makes these commitments most important and what differences do these commitments make? Okay, it says which five and listen carefully, which five might a Christian put at the top of their list and why? Okay, which five might a Christian put at the top of their list and why? So pause, pause the video again. I want you to write down, looking at the cards, they may not be in the right order, order that you put them in, but which five do you think the Christians might choose as their top five commitments? Pause the video, please. Okay, you should have written them down by now. Okay, obviously they'll be different from each other. You can discuss them with your with the people in the class, or you can discuss them. Just think about them and maybe share them in the the class blog as well if you get the chance to do that. Okay, think again. Pause the video for two minutes. Which five would you would have been Jesus's top commitments, and why? Which five? Pause the video. Two or three minutes.
Okay, we can come back together now. Hopefully you've written those down. Okay, and there may be some that overlap, there may be some that are very different. Um, be interested to see which ones you've got. Okay, now we're gonna move on again. This time, I want you to write down your main task, write down your own five, your top five commitments. And I want you to give a reason for each one. Okay, that's very important. Give a reason for each one. Okay, you must identify the impact that they have on your commitments and what they do. Okay, so let me give you an example. Okay, let me turn over and give you an example. So, for example, if I was writing from a Muslim point of view, I would say Muslims are committed to being part of the global Umar, the worldwide Muslim family. They stick together, they are under, they are all one under Allah. That means so I'm giving you my commitment and I'm saying why. Christians, Christians are committed to believing in God's grace for generosity. And they think God forgives everyone who truly repents. Again, my commitment and my reason. Hindus are committed to ahimsa or harmlessness. They try to live their life without killing or harming anything that lives. Again, your commitment and your reason. Now you've got to do the same thing, but for you. Okay, so you choose your top five. You can use the game to help you what you think your top five and give a reason to suggest why you think they are. Okay, can you do that? Please pause the video, give yourself about 10 minutes and then we'll come back to finish off the lesson. Pause the video, please. And welcome back. Year six, I'm coming to finish off the lesson. Hopefully you've got your five reasons and you've also written down your justifications for that as well. Okay, so finally, so bring it all together, okay? Share your ideas with your classmates, share your ideas with your family, um, or even submit them onto the blog, onto, onto the, uh, the Purple Mash for me to read as well and your class teachers to read. Um, and actually, even if, if you are religious or you're not, discuss them with your family would be a nice idea. Um, and again, generate lovely conversation about how committed you are to, maybe not just religion, but how you're committed to your family. How do they help you? What do they do to help? What do they do for you to be able to achieve things? What do you do to allow them to do other things for you? Things like that would be a nice, that, nice idea to do. Have a good think about that. Now, once you've done that conversation, we will have come to the end of our lesson, okay? Um, make sure that you complete your Purple Mash activity, your quiz online to show that you've done the lesson. And I will see you for your next lesson shortly, year six. Have a good day and I'll see you later. Bye.